I want to show you through a example of what we're struggling against in Oxnard. There's two gagging junctions. And what you have here is the gagging junction. We have two. This is uh, the first, uh, this is the second gagging junction. So it's a, it's a legal document that is taken to court where these gang injunctions are then passed. And in this legal document, what we were able to determine immediately was that the communities that they're describing aren't our communities. In other words, they paint a picture that there's bullets flying everywhere, that you can't walk your dog down the street, you can't wash your car. So the judge sees this and passes it because it would um, further cause harm to the community if they don't pass the gang injunction. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, gang injunction itself. What happens is, so the police are going around documenting. Documenting the gang activity means simply, uh, like compañera said, uh, having tattoos, self-admission, uh, a cop coming up to a kid on the street, hey, uh, how's uh, your cousin so-and-so? And if they acknowledge that they are related to this person, then they tag them on their little gang field identification card. So they start documenting any gang, in, uh, quote, gang um, activity. Then what they do with the gang, with all this information, they gather it and put it all and compile it and deliver it to, to the courts. After that, the judge immediately passes a preliminary injunction. That's just by default. Then what, what happens after this is this is where the catch is. For example, in Oxnard they said there was a, a thousand gang members in this one particular gang. And we know that's not true, okay? Because we grew up in the neighborhood. We, there's not a, a, a they, but they make it seem like there's an army of gangs, uh, gang members coming down the hill or something to freak out the people uh, to, to then pass this injunction. So what happened, I'm gonna go through the process right now. So if you go back real quick, this is a satirical uh, sketch that came out on the opinion page of the local newspaper. So what they were saying is, instead of having a, a small gang injunction in one neighborhood, let's have the entire county and then the next county. And in other words, the whole city, for example, uh, and the state really, like uh, Compañera has said, like for example, they already started in San Fernando, the whole city. It's a gang injunction zone. So this was like, why don't we have a little zone? Let's make the whole thing uh, an injunction zone. Similar to what SB 1070 was about. It was the whole state where people are, are living at, uh, let empower the police to stop people, to question them. So it was, the gang injunction is a form of uh, introducing a total police state. A gang injunction is a lawsuit. And it's, it uses, uh, business legal terms. It's a civil lawsuit, not a criminal lawsuit. So the threshold to to convict somebody is much easier. And it's under the guise of going after an unincorporated association. They don't. They, they say that uh, they're not registered. This gang is not registered. So you're an un unincorporated association, and we believe you have one to five hundred representatives. So then what they do, and this, it's similar to what the, uh, they do when, like for example, the union is uh, picketing in front of, 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 a, of a boss's you know, uh, business because they're exploiting people. So the, the, what the owner or the boss will do is petition to have an injunction to not let those, uh, the union workers fight and picket and block the entrances or whatever of that business. It's very similar to what this is. Okay, the same type of law. Um, so they go after them. Then what they do is, go ahead. Um, they, they pass it and they go and deliver this to everybody. But before they pass it, they select representatives. They say, okay, you 35 are representative of these 1,000 people we believe are, are your members of this unincorporated association. So they select representatives of this, uh, of this gang. They go up to them and say, here, you're being served, you need to show up to court. Oh, by the way, tell the other 900, 970 
people that they have to go to court too. That's impossible, okay? So then what happens is, maybe one person, sometimes two, if we're lucky, three or four people will go actually to the court date and try to fight it. And the avalanche of the legalities hits them. You know, we're talking about the situation, our situation for affording lawyers, uh, the timing, the money. I mean, it's just it's nearly impossible to defend yourself. So the judge, 100% of the time passes it. It's very few cases that have been able to stop it. I'm talking about a handful. After that date, the police is, has free reign to then start giving this injunction paper to everybody. And let me tell you what they do. This is the Spanish version, this is the English version. So they go up and knock on the door and say, hey, guess what, you missed your court date. They're like, what court date? Yeah, we even told the ranch that you're supposed to go to the court and then try to get yourself out of this thing. What are you talking about? They hadn't even heard about it. Well, it's too bad because we already have the legal authority to give you this paper. Once they give them that paper within 24 hours to 48 hours, either the city attorney, in this case in LA, but, or for example, in our county, it was the district attorney, then processes the information, you're on this list. Once you're on this list, you are restricted from these things. And I'm gonna say that they call it the 14 rules of living. New 14 rules for living. So if you're served with this, you have to follow these 14 guidelines. 11 of those items that you're restricted from doing are already illegal. Carrying weapons, selling drugs, beating somebody up, all those are already outlawed, if you will. But the catch with the civil gang injunction is that they throw in these things. Freedom of movement, okay? And what we mean that by that is you're restricted uh, to move around in certain parts of town, particularly the curfew. So even if you're an adult, uh, sometimes if you've never even had a record, but the police have identified you as a gang member, you get this, you have to be in your house by 10. Or you can't be outside at least, you have to leave town, right? You can't come into the zone. Freedom of association, anybody that has, uh, that is a known gang member, you cannot hang around with them anymore, even if they're your own brother. For example, we work with a family that are two brothers. When they left their house, they had to walk down, they lived in the projects there in the, in the neighborhood, one would go one way, one would go the other, because they could technically be violated, violating the association clause of this gang injunction. Freedom of expression, that one is uh, the attire. Okay, particular attire, completely, a lot actually. It's not just one, t one team, one jersey. Dodgers, you can't wear Dodgers, you can't wear Dallas Cowboys, you can't wear uh, certain color shoelaces. Um, uh, a bunch of items that are in this, in this document. And what we say, what we mean by circumvents uh, due process is exactly what we're saying, where they tell 35 people, go tell the rest, you never get the information, but you just lost your due process rights that you're supposedly supposed to have, and we know the history behind that. Okay, go on. Uh, compañera labeled it clearly, uh, what are the criteria? The criteria is these five points in our, in our city, at least, in our county. A reliable source says you're a gang member. Somebody says, hey, he's a gang member. What does that mean? Who is a reliable source? It's up to the discretion of the police officers, law enforcement, to decide that. Um, it could even be a trick question where they ask somebody, hey, is so-and-so still kicking it with the, the homies? Yeah, that's a reliable source that just identified you as a gang member. Arrested in the company of a known gang member. You're at a party, they do a raid, you get arrested, everybody's on the, on the ground. You're with so-and-so that is already labeled a gang member, you are now also arrested in the company. So you only have to match two of these five to be labeled and to get onto this list. Um, corresponds with known gang members. This one, uh, we're to walk, to working with the youth uh, in one of our programs we have, where if Facebook, MySpace, uh, if you're writing to your friends in jail, you're corresponding, and so you are officially affiliated and are susceptible to this list. In a picture with known gang members, the police come in, do a probation search, look at some of your pictures, they see all these people throwing up gang signs or what have you from the neighborhood, but, and you're there, you happen to be there, or it's a family gathering even, a quinceanera, you take a picture and a known gang member is right there, not even throwing gang signs up or anything, dressed up in a tuxedo, but they're there, and they're labeled a gang member, and you're in that picture, you are, you're in a picture with a gang member, they could use that and they have used that. Self-admission, this is the one where they come up to you, the police come up to you and say, hey, what's up, fool, you know, come on, man, you know, I thought you were down with the hood, yeah, I'm still down with my hood, yeah, and they, they get you.